from good morning. Praise the name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. How many of us are enjoying the heat? Eh? You're not enjoying it. Okay. You know, I sat there and I was saying to myself, we can't go through this kind of torment here on earth and then continue in hell, God forbid. So we must ensure we make heaven. Praise the name of Jesus. And I think our context for the next governor of Lagos State or to rule Nigeria. I promise you, I will put AC at every bus stop. I promise you, every market will be fully AC'd. So when you get to your home, you can just sleep. And if you vote for me, even your bedroom, I'll put AC in there. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. But God remains faithful. No matter how hot the sun may be, God will keep us cool. We will not be troubled in the name of Jesus. Every season will favor us. Every season will favor us in the name of Jesus. Can we please lift up hands and just thank God for life? Indeed, God has been good. God has been good. God has been good to us as a people, as a nation, as a church. God has been good. Some nations floods everywhere. Some nations drought. Some nations overwhelmed with snow and rain and ice and everything. But here we are in Nigeria. A little bit of heat, but we're still enjoying God's blessings. Can we just appreciate him for all he has done for us? Our health is intact. Our families are still intact. God has been good to us. Every day we eat something. Every day we drink something. We're not naked for clothes to wear. We have shoes on our feet. We have breath in our nostrils. We can stand on a dead. God has been good. God has been good. God has been good. Father, we thank you. As a nation, we thank you for the peace we are enjoying. As a family, we thank you for your blessings. As a church, we thank you for the continued unity. Father, Lord, we thank you for blessing the works of our hands. Thank you for empowering us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for blessing the works of our hands. We thank you for increase on all sides. We thank you that we open our shops every day. We open our businesses and people still come to patronize us. We thank you for we have jobs to go to. We thank you for our children to go to school and they learn, they come back home, they make progress every day. Father, Lord, we thank you. This can only be from you we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you in the name of Jesus can you please thank God for your brother standing beside you or your sister standing beside you or you have somebody to look at is a blessing from God there's some people that just talk in their, in their rooms they're just alone no one to keep them company, nobody to smile at them. So please thank God deliberately for your brother and for your sister standing beside you. And pray that regardless of how they look, God will show himself strong on their behalf in the name of Jesus. Please pray. Pray for each other. If you want to hold hands with somebody, please feel, feel free. But ensure that you're praying for somebody. Remasando Koholobo Shandeke, Hiri Brakalabo Boshanda. 
Le kahala bosa nde kahire bosa ndo kohoro bobo shanda. Re bra kahala bosa nde kahire broko lo bobo shanda. Re papa basa nde kahire bosa nde kahire bosa ndo. Re bra kahala bosa nde kahire bra kahala mosanda. Le papa basa ndo. Father, thank you for my brothers. Thank you for my sisters. Thank you for the joy they bring. Thank you for the joy they bring. Thank you for the smile that they give. Re bosa nde kahala bosa nde kahire bosa. Father, I pray that you bless them continually in the name of Jesus. You know the various areas of struggles, Lord, show yourself strong on their behalf in the name of Jesus. Make the ground easier for them to walk on. Father, in every dark area, shed light in the name of Jesus for every question they have. Lord, give answers of peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for making the crooked way straight for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for meeting every need. Thank you for meeting every need. Thank you for meeting every need. La Bosha Gadeka Ribo Boshanda. Thank you for meeting their every need. Le Boshandeka Hile Boshanda. Lord, thank you for keeping them from shame. Le Boshandeka Hile Boshanda. They shall not see shame. They'll not be embarrassed in the name of Jesus. They not have cause to beg for food to eat. Le Boshandeka Hile Bobosagadeka Le Boshanda. Ribraka La Boboshanda. Father, where they need help, send help. Where they need help, Lord, send help. Le Boshanda. Lord, lift every burden and grant peace. Lord, lift every burden and grant peace. Lord, lift every burden and grant peace. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to pray for yourself now. One thing I know is that when you come into God's presence, you shouldn't go back the same. You shouldn't go back the same. Because something will always drop. Either a word, an instruction, or definitely a blessing. I'd like you to pray this morning that God, all you have for me in today's service none of it will elude me the word you want me to hear not only will I hear I will understand exactly what you're saying Father let this service of today the 15th day of February be a life changing encounter in your presence for me as a person please pray in the name of Jesus Kahala boshande kahiri bosundo koholo boshande. Rebra kahala bosanda kahiri boshanda. Father, I pray that none of us should go back the same way in the name of Jesus. We shall receive everything you have for us today individually and collectively in the name of Jesus. The words you want us to hear, we shall hear. We will understand and know exactly what you would have us do. And as we begin to appropriate that word, the blessings that you've ordained will not elude us in the name of Jesus. Le boshande kahili bosunda. Through your word, answers will come. Through your word, healing will come. Through your word, deliverance will come. Through your word, Father, encouragement will come. Le boshande kahili bosunda. Le kekeli boshande kahili bosunda. The portion of blessings you've, you've laid up for us today. Lord, will not elude us in the name of the Lord because you said in your word that every day you load us with benefits. The portion of benefits for today, Lord, will not elude us in the name of Jesus. And Father, our prayer is that we shall live here bigger, better, and stronger than we came in the name of Jesus. We shall live here bigger, better, and stronger than we came in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we please commit all we shall do to God's hands from this opening prayer, the praise and worship, the testimonies, the word will come, we will dance, we will rejoice, and God will do exactly what he has proposed to do. Let us pray that Father be glorified. Flesh will not be exalted. 
and flesh should not get in the way of that which you're doing. Father, be glorified because we're here for you and not for man. Lord, be glorified. Please pray in the name of Jesus. Father, in all we shall do today, be glorified. From this opening prayer, the praise and worship testimonies, the word, Father, Lord, be glorified. Flesh will not get in the way. Flesh will not be exalted in any way in the name of Jesus. We will not hijack that which you're doing. Father, we pray as this meeting is in heaven, let it be here on earth in the name of Jesus. The choir will minister life unto us in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, Lord, you shall be glorified. We pray regarding the word. It will come with precision. It shall be accurate in the name of Jesus. It will answer questions, heal bodies in the name of Jesus. We pray that you grant your vessel utterance, clarity of thought and accuracy of speech in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, grant your vessel utterance, clarity of thought and accuracy of speech in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. What are your desires today? What are your desires? It's one thing coming to the Lord's presence where everything is available. And there's a possibility that one can walk away without anything. So what are your desires? What are your expectations this morning? Please talk to your father. The Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So there must be an expectation to receive something. So what are your expectations, your desires this morning? Father, Lord, we thank you for hearing our cries and glorifying yourself in our midst this morning. Be thou exalted, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you have a testimony you want to share with God's people, there'll be a pastor with you to attend to you at the Mother Purpose Hall. Do have a wonderful service and God bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is a faithful God. He's the reason why we are here. I want us to lift up our hands and begin to say something to him. Something sweet. Begin to recount all the good things he's done. Forget the things he's not done. Thank him. Appreciate him. For all he has done. For all he is doing. Because he's a faithful God.
looks to you. Come on, give it up to him. Give it up to him. All my battles belong to you. All my victory belongs to you. All my pain belongs to you. Everything that I am belongs to you.
Is it small? Is it small? Hallelujah. Show me how big, how gigantic God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we say thank you. For doing miracles in our lives, Almighty Father, we say thank you. For doing the impossibilities in our lives, we say thank you. Ah, Father, Lord God, we appreciate you, Lord. For there is none like you, Almighty God. You are always there when we call on you. And you do mighty things in our lives, Almighty Father. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have worshipped. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. We have some testifiers this morning. And um, 
if we couldn't take all, the rest will be giving their testimonies next week. I'd like to call Sister Victoria to please come forward quickly. And then Sister Kemisola Babalola to be on standby to two minutes. And Sister Patricia to please be on standby. Praise the Lord. Two minutes. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Jay. Good morning, Sister Pastor Tolu. And good morning, church. Good morning, all the pastors. We can't hear you. Good morning, all the pastors. Good morning, Pastor Jay. And good morning, Pastor Tolu. Good morning, your congregation. I'm here to say thank you to you all because I was told that you all contributed for me to start up a business. I'm grateful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Kemisola Babalola. Praise the Lord. Encourage her, please. Brother Daniel, please come forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. I'm giving this testimony to the glory of God. My name is Mrs. Kemisola Babalola. I'm a fontainer for years. I'm in hospitality department. Last week, Thursday showers, I came to church. Meanwhile, it's, it's one of my sisters in the Lord who I'm squatting with gave me 1,000 naira to come for the Thursday showers. I don't have a dime with me. On my way to church, there was a particular lady in a keke. She prayed for every one of us inside the keke. Then I got to church. I saw a seed of 100 naira to a grandma when they asked someone who is wearing orange. I told myself that I'm not putting an orange cloth, but I know that Almighty God will visit me today. At the end of the program, I came here, I lie down, and I, I prayed to God, and I know that God has answered me. Immediately, I get up from the altar. The anointed man of, uh, of uh, anointed woman of God, that Pastor Jimmy was taking around the premises. I saw her there. I need that. I said, Mommy, I want to just to pray for me. I just want to tap on, on your anointing. And she prayed. Immediately I left. She called me back. Madam, come. I said, Mommy, what? She just blessed me with 10,000 naira. After that, before I left, as I was going, I just had an alert of 5,000 naira again. So I know that. God can be trusted. Amen. So I'm encouraging someone today. Nothing is too small. Amen. To no. sow a seed. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you God so much. You. Thank you. That's a wonderful testimony. For someone that had just 1,000 naira, left with 15,000 naira. Our God is a good God. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, senior pastor. And good morning, all the pastors. My name is Patricia. I'm a film producer. I've been working with um, people, people's production. So last year, I just said, let me start my own production. So I, my mom died after the burial. The little money that was left with me was not enough. So I sweet talked my friend into joining me to, uh, to shoot the movie. So after talking, he gave me 1.5 million to join to what I have to shoot that movie. So on our set, as we were shooting, my director brought one guy, he said he's an editor, he has been working with him. I said, okay, if you have been working with him, I said, it's good, no problem. The guy was with us on set. So as we were shooting, he's copying. So me, and I gave him my own personal drive. I said, copy for me too, for my backup. He said, yes, ma. He collected my drive. At the end of the shoot, this guy gave me my drive. I said, did you copy everything? He said, yes. Did you copy the last scene? He said, yes. I put the uh, drive on my bag. So... I said, okay, after, how many days will it take you to edit the movie? He said, 10 days. I said, wow. I said, did you negotiate with the director? He said, yes. I said, tomorrow I'll give you advance. After 10 days, I don't see editor. I've been calling editor. I can't find editor. And I borrowed somebody 1.5 million. And I told the person, in four months, I'll give you 2 million. I've been calling editor without knowing that his system crashed. And he doesn't know how to face me. I said, okay. It, Come out now, show you I have backup. Come and copy from my um, drive. I didn't know that this guy did not copy for me. He didn't copy a dime. Because as he just told me, I put the drive on my bag and I kept it. I started looking for this guy. Two months, I didn't see editor. My VP rise. How do I tell the person that I borrowed 1.5 million? What do I tell him? 
at the end of it, I have to go to Panti. They have to trace him. They arrest him. Why didn't you copy for this lady? He said because he thought I would give the job to another person. One more that's minute. Why, that's why he didn't copy for me. I said, okay. So at the end of it, no, the only thing you could produce was 90,000 naira. My, my brothers and sisters, I don't know what to do. So I have to hold on to God. So every Thursday if I come here, I will pick a promise. I will go inside my room. I say, Father, Pastor Jimmy gave me a voucher. He said you have paid for everything. So I need to collect whatever it is in this voucher. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed until I got one million naira. I paid this guy. Praise remaining 1.5. I, I told him by March, I will give you the remaining one. He said no problem. My happiness, why I'm giving this testimony is because of this last one I collected. He said, God said, what he would do with me, what he would do with me, everybody around me will testify the goodness Amen. of Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much. Brother Daniel, and then Sister Joan, please on standby, and then Sister Amakan Wusu. Good morning, church. Another one minute. Good morning, our pastor, senior pastor Jimmy. I'm here to give God all the glory of God. I was I was on Saturday night, so I was I was totally down in my spirit. So I was thinking, and I feel I feel sick in that night. So I couldn't know what to do. And I'm I'm a guy that I like to pray well well. So around after nine ten, I said let me sleep. So just enter my bed and pray. So along the, uh, along the night, I have a vision that somebody was pursuing me. So when the person was pursuing me, like I was flying. So when I fly, I just land in a, a, a place that dust is around. So I saw our senior pastor just walking behind me, just hold my hand and lift me up. So I wanted to just give God the glory because I know there is a button in me. But God is going to bring all the battle down. Amen. I want to thank God for all the, uh, for the glorious work that God has been doing in this ministry. Amen. Before I was watching online. But I see that God is faithful in this ministry. Amen. So I want to thank God because if God do one, if you continue to thank him and he will do more. So I Amen. praise him in my heart. I say, let his name alone be glorified. No matter the challenges that I have in my working place, I know that God will handle that one for Amen. me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Sister Joan, can you please come forward? Another one minute. Good morning, pastors. Good morning, church. Good morning. I, I want to thank the Lord. January 31st made it one year that I resigned from my work, my job, and God has been faithful. In the space of one year, I've been able to take on some certifications, and also register my company. And then God supernaturally brought me clients, even when I didn't know how to advertise, so I give him all Thank the praise. Secondly, January 29th, I, I was doing some laundry in the house, and I stepped into the house to do something, and I lost my balance. I lost my footing, and the next thing I saw was myself hitting the ground. Now, if it was just my body hitting the ground, it was something else. My head hit the ground so hard. My phone was not with me. No neighbors were around, but the Lord was with me. Amen. I stood up gingerly from the ground, and I knew that God came through for me. Amen. Lastly, on the 5th of February, the Lord added, my husband clocked 50, Amen. and I just want to give God all the praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our God is a good God. Sister Amaka Nwosu, two minutes, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is my second time of coming here. On Sunday, I came here mysteriously. How I found myself here, I don't know. The last I know was I went to drop my son that was going back to school. And um, I had some ideas in my head that I wanted to execute when I get home. So I forgot that the Todd Milan Bridge was actually closed because normally I follow that route back to the island. But somehow I found myself driving all the way straight down. I didn't know where I was going. I hardly know anywhere in mainland. Something told me, make a U-turn. And I did in the middle of the road, and I heard Tolu. I had to look back like the person was sitting directly behind me in my car. And I was wondering, what's going on? Who is speaking to me? 
Then I heard turn right. I made a, a turn to the right. And I kept driving because I was lost in thought. I just kept driving. And I was just hearing tolu, 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 tolu. I got to the end of the road and I stood because there's a left, there's a right. I didn't know where to go to. One of the, what the I don't know, the security people or the road people sha, just tapped at my glass and gave me a sign like, do you want to park? And I knew there was a car behind me. I just answered him, yes, yes, just so that I can clear from the road. He gave me where to park. I parked. I didn't know that I parked opposite a filling station until after church service. And I sat down for a while. The same man came and tapped again. Are you here for the, you are here for the service, right? And I said, is there a church here? He said, yes. I said, okay, where's the church? He said, you have to walk back. So I followed the crowd that was moving. And I entered. I first of all entered a place where they were singing praise and worship, which happened to be children's section. And then I asked the person there, please, where's the adult section? She said, keep moving. I followed the crowd and I found myself in the church. One of the ushers said to me, are you alone? I said, yes. I was sitting somewhere there that Sunday. And I was just enjoying the whole thing. In my mind, I was like, let me just be buying time. When I finish, I'll go home and still do what I want to do. So for me, I was buying time while seated in the church. Then the first Bible passage that came that day was 2 Thessalonians 3.16. I can't forget that part because I copied it down. Like God's peace, he will give it to you and it will be with you always. So I cried because for me, I needed that message in my head. Then the prayer point and everything that came, I joined it. And I was counting and passing time until Pastor Jimmy came up and I was like, because I was asked, my daughter was chatting me while I was in church. And I said, hmm, you, don't, you can't believe where I am. Huh? I am in that actor's uh, church. <laughs> and my daughter said, ah, wow, are you going to see him after church? I said, what's my business with seeing him after church? So I sat down, enjoyed the whole church and everything, all the messages and all. So while they, they were doing anniversary for the wedding people in March, in February, one of the couple that was sitting, I don't know where they were sitting, just said, we came from UK and we came to church because of Pastor Tolu's voice. And then it clicked to me, oh, that's the Tolu I've been hearing. So she, I saw her wave from there and the camera picked her. And I said, oh, wow. So that's the Tolu. I was wondering where Tolu is coming from. I'm Igbo. So I'm wondering where Tolu is coming from. So after church service, I wanted to join the crowd to live through that place. The other voice said, go this way. And I saw someone standing here in his suit. And I said, please, can I see Pastor Tolu? He said, do you have an appointment? Do you have a number? I said, no, but if it's not possible, I can go home. He said, go to that side. I went there. I saw people standing there. One of them said they were praying. Do you have an appointment? I said, but if it's not possible, I can go home. This is what I was saying. And one of them said, hold on. Went in, came out. And then the next thing I saw... A lady that came to me and said, I'm Pastor Tolu's PA. What do you want to see her for? I narrated my story and everything. Then I went to see Pastor Tolu and I saw Pastor Jimmy. And then he was like, you are so lucky to break through protocols because we don't see people on Sundays. I said, okay, maybe it's just my luck. And I told them my burden, you know, and what I wanted to do that day. And I don't know how I found myself in church. They prayed for me prayed for calmness, peace, and everything. Every word that he prayed that day was just what I was passing through. Then Pastor Selu said, he, she heard in her voice, 375. And then I looked at her and I started crying. I said, my son that just went back that Sunday, I collected money from someone and lied to the person I was going to give him back on Monday. Because I knew in my heart I wasn't going to be around on Monday. I'd already made up my mind that I wasn't going to be around on Monday. You know, and because for me, I didn't want to go home. I just wanted to end it all. And I told myself, if it comes on Monday, knocking at the gate, you will not see me. At least I've collected that one and that's it. So that exact amount was given to me that Sunday. And it made me to sit down in my house, you know, pondering. Like I said, God, you did this one to save my shame from the one of Monday. I know you will do the other ones for me. And you help me solve all the other problems and all the other debts. I just want to give God praise. I came here today because I chatted the PA. I don't know where she is. I chatted the PA and I said, I followed your page, the church page and everything. I see you guys have a program on Thursday. I will come very early on Thursday. I'm coming from Aja. That's my praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
And Roy sees. He sees our hearts. He fights our battles. And he gives us peace. For God to direct her all the way from Ajah, when she was just to drop her child on the mainland and go back and go and commit suicide. God decided that I am going to lead you to where you are going to receive your peace. And she received her peace. And not only that, God mentioned the exact amount of money she was supposed to give on Monday, which she never even thought would come from anywhere. Our God is a great God. Trust this God. He never fails. He is a faithful God. And whatever he says he will do, he will do. He has never lied. He has always been in charge. Praise the Lord. Sister Chisholm, can you please come forward quickly? And brother Eni Lolobo Adeshino, please come forward too. And sister Olufemi Adurami, also come forward. Quickly, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, pastors. I'm very shy, so skip. Are you sure? <laughs> so, I want to thank God. Earlier, early January, I think the second Thursday shower, the Wednesday night to the Thursday, the way our house is structured, we are the only ones in our house. So, we have a door to the staircase, but we don't lock our parlor door because of low lights and heat. So my dad usually sleeps in, in the parlor with my baby sister most of the times. So I was in my room that morning, that night. Around 3 a.m., I saw someone walk into my room. Because whenever I'm sleeping, if someone walks into my room, I will know. So I vaguely unplugged in my phone. I thought it was my dad. Then I opened my eyes. I saw it was one very huge man without shirts, without slippers. I was very shocked. Then I asked him who, were, who, who, who he was. Then immediately he saw that someone had seen him. He ran downstairs and he ran to the balcony and jumped downstairs. Then I started raising the alarm, tiff, tiff, tiff. Before my dad could wake up and ask me what was happening, I said that someone just unplugged my phone. I don't know who he was. My dad just started raising the alarm and stuff. But at the end of the day, I was, weren't able to catch him. Then I was able to block my line, but before I got to the bank in the morning, he has cleared my account, cleared my dad's account and all. The money he cleared, I was supposed to use to start my jam tutorial. So that one was like cancelled. I was crying seriously. Then when we got back home, we realized he has carried my daddy's three phones already before he came into my room safe. So my dad was like, because ah. the way I was crying, my dad was like, at least they should just even find my own phone because I have a life still without phone. So it went on to this point and it was terrible because I, I can't stay without phone. So... <laughs> My uncle, I was able to log into to my friend's email, with, um, log into my email with my friend's phone. So my uncle chatted, um, sent me an email asking me to forward a document to a professor at, at UNN that he knows the man. Then, and asked if he should forward it directly. It was my document. Or if he should do it from Texas. Then I said he should do it directly because I don't have a mobile phone. Then he said, he, then the next email he replied, it was like, how much does a mobile phone cost in Nigeria? Then I told him the amount. Yesterday, he sent more than half of the money. I was very, very happy. I was even able to like pay for my tutorial from part of the money. I want to thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Brother Enilo Lobo, additional two minutes, please. Good morning, church. Good morning. I want to thank God and testify to the glory of God for what God is doing through this ministry. Two minutes. I prayed on the altar. I told God, my eldest daughter, she actually happened to be pregnant and I was looking unto God for safe delivery simply because of circumstances that surrounded her birth. My first marriage, the mother died two weeks after her birth. Her own mother died the day the immediate junior brother was born. So it gave me some concern. So I prayed on this altar. And I told God, if you made it after marriage, she's delivered safely, I will come and testify. To the glory of God, she gave birth safely. Bouncing baby boy. The daughter, my daughter is fine. The boy is fine. 
I also want to testify to the glory of God concerning my daughter that is now among the graduating set of law department in Lasso. Amen. It was a tug of war from the entry point to the graduation point. Amen. Sometimes there will be no food. Sometimes I will be coming from Ayobo to church. My wife will say, this is your church from Ayobo. Go to this church close by. She has never been coming because of cost of coming and going. My son that is also about to enter into All Mac University, he has been faithful. He has been coming with me his year, Elijah. Even though I am yet to pay his school fees, but the boy has been composed, he has been yes. dedicated, and he is saying, Daddy, the word of Pastor Jimmy, that all that we ever need, God will provide, that I should not worry. Even two weeks to go, the boy is still always, this morning from my boy is still here with me. So God be the glory, God is keeping the family Amen. with an income that is 50% less our needs. God is meeting everything. So God be the glory. Amen. This altar is truly altar of God. Amen. May God's name be glorified forever. Amen. Our God is good. Thank you, Jesus. And Sister Olufemi Adurami, another Praise two God, minutes. Church. Praise God. All right. Uh, I want to bless the name of the Lord on my news. I remember 2018, I, I was actually seeking admission, and I was a Muslim, actually. And I promised my mom before I went for the exam that, don't worry, when I get there, I'll go to mosque. I would look for a mosque, because she said that, I know that you're going there, because my sister that is there is actually a Christian. She said, I don't want you to go to church. And I said, okay, that don't worry, when I get there, I'll look for a mosque, and I'll go. And uh, to God be the glory. My sister was not staying on campus. I looked for mosque, but I didn't see for some weird reason. But the only mosque I saw was on campus and she was staying off campus, so it wasn't really convenient for me. And while I was there, there was a day she just told, told me, let's go to church together. And I was like, what am I doing? All right, why not? I went to church. I gave my life to Christ. And I didn't gain admission in that school. I came back home, I was rushed back home because they said um, the school, I don't know one way or the other, my result was so slashed, I had to come back to Yabatek to check if I was going to gain admission there. They said it had closed, then I later told everyone, because normally I didn't want to go to school. I just really wanted to do like the whole handwork that I really like to do. And then when I gained admission, she was like, you will still not go to um, church. Mind you, when I came back, I was already praying in tongues. I remember when I was praying in tongues in the house, my mom said, you are praying lie that you are still going to mosque. I went to mosque, I went to Madrasa. I read the Quran even at that time. And you know, when I get admission, year one passed, I just started looking for um, fellowship to attend. I attend first president fellowship. I just knew that the only thing I could do at that time was pray in tongues. And when I joined the fellowship, the meeting I joined was a prayer meeting. And I just said, okay, this is where I was going to be. And to glory of God, when we all started, one they just said, which department do you want to join? I said, I just want to join one prayer minute. department. I was the only one in the prayer department. And now, year two, I was, um, I was appointed as the follow-up coordinator of the fellowship. Year three, I was appointed as the vice president and workers coordinator Amen. slash prayer coordinator of the fellowship. Amen. I thought that was done, but in the national level, I was appointed as the evangelism coordinator in the Holy Amen. Gospel. After that, year four, I was appointed as the same vice president prayer called workers coordinator of that same fellowship. Amen. And I thought I was done. I was appointed as the sisters called of the Lagos Amen. State again. And I thought that was done because it was overwhelming. Then the justice of the school, I was appointed as the vice president of the old Amen. fellowship on campus. And now I'm currently serving in this blessed church. I don't know how God did it. I don't know how he brought me this far. I don't know who prayed me into this journey. Yesterday, my ministry clocked three years. The refiner's bride. I mean, the ladies there, I don't know how God just keeps showing up. Because when I started, I just felt like, how will I do this? You just gave your life to Christ. But I don't know where the speed and the hand of the Lord came from. Amen. For what, three years yesterday. And I want Amen. to give God all the glory. Because Hallelujah. I know that this life has so much impact Hallelujah. to do. Hallelujah. And next, I want to thank God in advance. Because my life currently right now just looks like, I mean, God is not working. 
I want to thank God because I know that He is the God that that would not lie. He's a man that does not Praise lie. The Lord. He's the God that would God take delight in helping His children, and I know that would come through for me and make the impossibility possible. Man. Next, I want to thank God for the life of my sister in advance. The last time I was there, I, I was saying that you know the devil really tried in my family with my mom and then my sister, and I said that I you know I just really want to bless the name of the Lord because. She, I said she was fine. And then January, we heard that it was kidney disease. She has been on dialysis ever since. And, you know, it really shook my faith sincerely. But I don't know, I just really got a message that that was a distraction for the life I'm supposed to believe. And I just handed over that to God. Now she's in church. It's stable, but she's still on dialysis. Praise I want to God. give God all the Our glory. Because it will perfect it in beautiful folds. I'll come back to testify in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Our God is good. You will definitely get a job after your, your, your youth service. Because you have served the Lord. And he will showcase and announce you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Will I have a testimony to Shoki? You know about two or three weeks ago. I gave a testimony about my son. That got um, a permanent job. Instead of a contract job that he's been getting. And I also told you that the second one too lost his job for about a year. Last year, March, after delivery. I mean, after he had his son. His... So we've been praying since then. And I told him too that God is going to give you a contract, not a contract job, but a permanent job. And that permanent job is going to pay more than contract job. Because you see, all these young ones abroad, they always like contract job because it's better. But the disadvantage of that one is that it is short-lived. You'll be working maybe for about six months or one year, maximum two or two years. And so they enjoy it and they believe that they will get another job. But this one, one year with family, oh my God, prayer every day. He just called me about two or three days ago and said, Mommy, I have a good news for you. I said, eh, can I hear it? I have two different jobs. And they are permanent. I don't even know which one to choose. I said, eh, now you don't know which one to choose. Pray and God will show you. What am I saying? Wait on God. It might look very difficult, but wait on him. God is a faithful God. He sees you, he hears your heart. Whatever you are asking God for, God will do it. He does the impossible. When you think that it cannot happen, that is when it will happen. I just want to give all the glory to the Almighty Father. Who hears us when we pray? And who does the impossible? We have been listening to all the testimonies in this church. You will know that God is in charge and is in control. And when God is in charge, he can never fail. Failure is not in his record. I want us to just give praise to the Almighty Father that whatever it is that you are asking God for, whatever it is that you are desiring from God, He said, when you delight in me, I will grant the desires of your heart. You cannot be serving God in vain. It is not possible. Our God is a good God. Thank you, Almighty Father, for all the testifiers. And thank you in advance for all the other testimonies that will come because we know, Lord God Almighty, that you have not finished with us yet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Just let's clap for the Almighty Father for all the testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want us to bring out our offering. Prayerfully, believing God is a seed that you are sowing. Telling God who he is and what you are expecting. The most important thing is to have a relationship with God. Because when we have a close relationship with God, intimacy with him, he knows you by name. He knows who you are. And when you call on him, as he said, he will do great and mighty things in our life. Father, Lord God Almighty, we raise up our offering. We give it cheerfully and thankfully, Almighty God. We sow it as a seed, Almighty Father, to say thank you for life. To say thank you for what you are doing in our lives. To say thank you for all the blessings. To say thank you for all the favor. To say thank you because you are God. You are not a man that lies, neither the son of man that repents. When you say a thing, it comes to pass. So, Father God Almighty, we say thank you. We worship and we we'll bless your holy name. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. 
Over to you. Hallelujah. Let's worship our God who is holy forever. He's the, he's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's here. Let's just begin to worship him.
touch me with your hand. Ah, yeah. Touch me with your hand. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me with your hand. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody's getting the touch from the Lord right now. He will touch you only way he knows how to. In places where no man can reach. Shepherd of my soul. Captain of my life. Speak to my soul, Jesus. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Jesus. For somebody, there is a warm feeling coming over you now. And you are being flooded with peace that passes all understanding. He's doing it now. Jesus. Please don't let me go. The same way. Touch me with your hand. You touch me, Jesus. We welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. We welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. In thy ambrenda basi anda hashi ande emosinda. Please don't let me go. It's very weird. Somebody, you've been worried because, I don't know, you were told or you've been worried or you found out that they had taken your picture somewhere to some place and they had said that they had tied, it's very weird, it's like they tied, they used a rope to tie your picture to something or something and you found it and you've been worried because they said that they've tied your destiny somewhere. <laughs> And it has troubled you. It, 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 I see it's weird, like tied. It's like they tied the rope to something that belonged to you, a picture, something belonging to you. And you have been worried. Because they, they have tied your destiny. <laughs> but if they did not give you your destiny, they cannot tie your destiny. <laughs> if they did not create your destiny, they cannot tie your destiny. So anyone under the sound of my voice, Worried that your destiny has been tied. Who ties when God has not tied? Who says when God has not said? Who speaks when God has not spoken? Any 
anyone that has purposed in themselves, that will be a stumbling block to your progression in life. If they do not repent, they will carry it on their heads. In the name of Jesus, to their children's children, if they do not repent, they will carry it on their heads. In the name of Jesus. Very strange. Very weird. <laughs> they tied. They tied it with some kind of material. I see green in my head. Don't be worried about all these all these things. There are principalities and powers. We know that they exist, but we know that there is a name. That is above, far above every other name. So you must understand that, yes, in the spiritual world, there is hierarchy as well. Yes, there is a hierarchy. I remember watching this testimony online of this man who was deep into witchcraft that was given, that was married to the matriarch witch on the day he was born. And I was not breastfed for months. The snake wrapped around him for three months. His mother could not... Some deep things, crazy matters. And he was telling about how, I think I said this before, that I think said Morisarello was coming and there was a, a warning that they sent to all their people. Stay 60 miles away because there's a man of God that is coming. And if you are within that 60 mile radius, wherever you are, you will die. So there are levels to this thing. Blood past blood. Covenants past covenants. And we have a blood that speaks. Because last, last, they will kill chicken. They will kill goats. They will kill whatever and shed blood. But our own blood that we have speaks. See, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If you do not know who you are and what you carry, then you will be cheated. You will be oppressed. You will be abused. You will live in fear. So, I've said it many times. If they want to take my picture, let me turn my better side. Take it well. Because there is no altar that you will put. We have a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. <laughs> so, whatever blood, bring your own. At the end of the day, we are under the superior blood of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Think about it. People go with confidence when they kill chicken and put it on their head and they dance and they do and they feel that they are fortified. It says those who know their God. Those who know their God shall be strong and do what exploits so if you know your god if you know your god if you know the one that lives inside of you if you know the spirits that which you carry there is an understanding and an expectation that you have when you walk into any situation you cannot put anything on me i am covered by the blood of jesus Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Take all the praise for you deserve it. Father, I thank you for the testimonies that we heard today. We thank you that you are perfecting everything that concerns everyone in the name of Jesus. For somebody here today, by the end of today, your testimony will be complete. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor, adoration, thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Thank you very much. Please appreciate Grace Levites worship team. Um, do we get Grandma's account number? Do we have account? Grandma, uh, Grandma, I see you. Hi, Grandma. You're not wearing orange today, but I see you. Um, we need your account number. You've given it? Yes. Uh, I will not say the amount that came in, but you have been highly favored. Did they tell you the amount that came in? 
No, let me tell you, I'm coming. Let me not say it out. Yeah. God is, God is doing amazing things. Money just kept coming in. And we didn't make a call. God is good. Amen. Okay. We're going to finish some time today. Amen. amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. 11 o'clock. Who are you of little faith? Everybody, mm, mm. It's, we have how many minutes? 38 minutes. Let's see what God will do. Let's go. Psalm 24. We're preaching today. Psalm 24, verse 2. 38 minutes. I can't, you know, I, I feel it. Like we people didn't believe that. Way. Is it that bad? We don't really finish about what? Yeah, lately, sure, but 11 o'clock will be done today. Ah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, someone that gave her testimony, someone just blessed her with 25,000. That just gave her testimony here today. Someone just gave her 25,000. Listen, we are in an unusual uh, season where God is blessing people. Can we just appreciate Fountain and the online community? Um, the amount of lives that have been changed over the last couple of months, and people keep on giving. And when you give, you will never lack. In Jesus' name. Psalm 24, verse 2, put it up on the screen. Or oh, let's start from verse 1. It says this The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness of it. The world and those that dwell in it. The earth is the Lord's. Everything that you see is the Lord's. Everything that exists is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything that you see Anyone you interact with is the Lord's. If you are in this earth, you are the Lord's. That's a beautiful thing to know and believe. You, you, you know there's a confidence you have when you are in your own house. Whether rented or owned. Whether you rented it at least for the time you rented it, it's your house. Whether you own it or not, it is your house. There is a confidence. When you enter your house, do you ask anyone for permission to sit down? Do you ask anyone for permission to go into the fridge? Okay, let's take a first step for that. Let's not say your house. In your father's house, or mother's house, or brother's house, do you ask, I'm sorry, please, can I go to the fridge? There is a confidence you have because you know that is either yours or the one who gave birth to you owns it. So there is a confidence. Is there a restricted area you cannot enter in your house? Well, I mean, in your own house, there's a place. Someone say, you see this place here? As the owner, all this place. But you see this place, you cannot enter. I bet you that's the first place we're entering. What do you mean? In my, own, in my house. If they, even, if they rent you the place and they lock the door and say, this door, you cannot, by somehow the door will break. So, something just happened. I just fell into the door because they, they don't want to put restrictions on you in your own space, in your own house. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and you are an heir of the one who the earth belongs to. It is your inheritance by right. So there is nowhere in the world that you are not welcome. And I say that very easily. 
And it's simple. But if you have that mindset and mentality that anywhere I enter is the Lord, everything changes. Remember we talked about expectation as a pillar, um, four pillars of, of, of um, expectation. We talked about expectation um, as expect action, posture of faith. You walk expecting that things should yield for you. It's a mindset that you have. Listen, uh, let me not cast myself. But anyways, I just thought of a story. Um, BC, before Christ, was it's not needed. Point is, there is a mindset that you must have anywhere you go. You expect that things will yield for you because the earth is the Lord. And everyone that you you'll encounter because even them, your father owns them too. You don't have to deal with people. You just speak to your father who owns them. Case in point. If you go to an establishment or an organization and you know the CEO and you're talking to the receptionist or the manager, the manager is being difficult, what do you do? Don't worry. I'll call your boss. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, oh it's okay. No, don't worry. Don't worry. No worries. Uh, it's even worse if the person is your family member. <laughs> Uncle? <laughs> Auntie, how are you? Hey, there's one person. I just came. You don't... There's no need because you know the one who owns everything. You see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare, we don't use canal methods. You must understand that everything that you ever need, you can settle your battles on your knees. You can speak to God who controls all of them. Lord, this person has been a problem for me. Father God, handle it. If you live in that, that mindset and that understanding, then life becomes very simple. You're not responsible for anything. I tell parents all the time, before, <laughs> you know, when kids are born, they don't, they didn't ask you to bond them. Did, they, did, they, did you consult them? Um, Jide, do you want to be born today? Yes, I want to be born. <laughs> no, 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 no. You people did the do. And then the do brought the Jide. And our Jide is here looking at you. So you must feed Jide. Did Jide, did Jide, did, did, did. Yes or no? Yes. It is not Jide's responsibility how you eat. It's your own. Because you are the one that brought Jide. Until Jide becomes a man. <laughs> You are responsible for Jide, if you are here, if your name is Jide, well, the Lord is highlighting you. <laughs> but the mindset is you are responsible. So the same way, see, the good thing about being God's child is no matter how old you are, you are God's child. Because it's the ancient of days. So as old as you are, you know rich God. So you are God's Jide. Lord, you are responsible for me. Everything that I will ever need. Lord, now, don't sit in your house and say, God, you're responsible for me. I won't do work. I pity you. Because the Bible says if you do not work, you will not. <laughs> God has given you everything that you need. But in situations where you are believing God, understand that you are not doing life by yourself. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And we broke down Genesis 1. That was the first time. If you missed it, go back and find it. But let's go to verse 2. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and those that dare within. Now look at verse 2. For he, who is that he? God. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the streams and the rivers. Hold on. See, when, when I read things, I like to take a pause and just kind of, let's chew on that for a second. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Then he has founded it on, upon the seas. Okay, hold on. Seas. Seas means w w more than one, right? But what makes up seas is water. Okay, let's, can we, can we, deep, can we dig deeper? 
Last week, last I checked, um, we know that what science has told us, there are three states of water. Solid, liquid, and gas, right? Remember, when water is solid is when it's ice, right? So when it's ice, it's solid. And when things are solid, you know, you can do things with it. It's mal, you know, you can break it, you can throw it. Water can become a weapon if I stone you with a block of ice, right? Because it has mass to it. There's density. It's solid. Then when something is liquid, it flows. It's not, you can't hold it in your hand. If I give you what I say, hold water. If you hold water like this, if I came and I said, see water, I hold it, most people will run away first. Because it's impossible. Water is malleable. It takes on the shape of whatever container you put into. It's fluid. It's always flowing. It's never static. You can't stone somebody with water. Are you with me? It's liquid. You can drink it because it's fluid. If you try to drink ice and put it, you suck and try to water, but you just look because it's solid, right? We have liquid and then we have gas. It's like mist, steam, vapor. You can't, you can see it, you can't hold it, right? Okay. Solid, liquid, gas. Those are the three states that we are aware of. But he established it on the seas, on the liquid. So you see that? There is something that we do not know about the state of what liquid can do. Or maybe there are more states apart from solid liquid gas. Because the solid liquid gas, he didn't say he established it on solid. He didn't establish it on gas. He established it on liquid. But liquid, you can't establish anything on it. So how does God establish it on liquid? That means there is a state that we do not know about what liquid can do. And I call that the fourth state, and I call it the God state. <laughs> and when you read things like this, it just shows you the limit of man's wisdom. Yes. And when you realize how limited your wisdom is, it puts you in a state of humility when it comes to dealing with God. Because we like to think we know. Because sometimes that's God. we speak from a place of knowledge. How people know that you can be ignorant with alacrity? You can speak ignorance with confidence. Doesn't mean it's not ignorance. <laughs> Confident ignorance. When you begin to read things like this, it exposes the limitation of human wisdom. And you know, they say that we don't use 100% of our brain. Now, the number to which we use, you know, uh, to be accurate, I mean, different figures, some people say we use less than 10%. What, whatever the case is, we know it's not 100. So let's even assume, for the sake of hypothesis, that we use less than 10% of our brain. Fantastic. If we use less than 10% of our brain, let me ask you a question. Of all the information that exists in the world, some people say, with confidence, I know 1% of everything that exists in the world. Every information that exists, I know 1%. One. Nobody? Okay. I know 0.5% of everything information that exists in the world. 0.5? Nobody? I know 0 0.025 of all the information that exists in the world. Ah, nobody still, come on. Are we not brilliant people here? Okay. I know 0 0.0001 of all the information that exists in the world. So hold on. We don't know 0 0.0001 of all the information that exists in the world. And we use less, in that 10% of the brain that we use, we don't know 0 0.00001. But yet, we like to argue with God. <laughs> Can you 
imagine how frustrating it must be for God from his point of view? <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? Okay, let me, let me try, to, try to break it to your understanding. Um, if you've ever dealt with a toddler that is your child, or let's even go toddler, or maybe adolescent, maybe a teenager, and it's almost amusing when they're trying to prove their case or trying to prove that they are sharp. Because you, who is their parent, is looking at them thinking, hey, yeah. <laughs> and it's sad because they really believe that what they are saying is right. But you, you're like, but, oh. Sometimes it's cute. Sometimes you want to stone them with slippers. Sometimes it's frustrating because you can see the limitation of their knowledge and their wisdom. And you will think that they would understand that you who is speaking was once their age. There's a saying, you're about saying that say, what a old man can see sitting down. A young person can never see standing up on it. Even if you climb, you can't see because there's wisdom that comes with experience and age. There are certain things you cannot buy. It, it comes with time. I'll prove it to you. How many people have ever found the old picture of yourself when you saw in an outfit that you wore that you thought you were the coolest thing since sliced bread and you, you posed with... And then you find this picture and you think to yourself now, what was I wearing? What was I... How is this even me? Because time has passed and your understanding of life has changed your perspective and your perception and life has shown you and you have learned so much. So what you thought was cool then can never be cool now. Or when you think about people that you dated in the past, did they swear for me, me? But at that time, you had sleepless nights. At that time, you had chocolate bango shake. Hey! But let, let me tell you, let me tell you a quick story. Side note, I'm looking at my time, 21. <laughs> I was 10 years old, and I was in love. No, 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 you laugh now. But you could not tell me anything. I was in love. And my girlfriend, at the time, well, I think 11 or 12, I don't remember, you know. And the problem was that her whole family had won visa lottery and they were relocating to the Americas. But the problem was we were in love. And it was a lifetime commitment. We had made promises to each other that we would never listen. I'm, you laugh now. See me, I'm telling you about this moment in my life, how many years later. And the problem was what was I going to do? She was leaving. So I made a vow. As a matter of fact, yeah, I don't know what we we're doing then, but, anyways. She had made this nice little tape of songs and she was singing. You know those tapes that you record? Recorded cassettes. Don't you use pencil to rewind? And she had recorded lovely songs that I would listen to. You know, it was very thoughtful. So on the night that she was leaving, I felt like my whole world was crumbling. And then I think it was like, 96.9 or 93 percent they were playing like R and B and they all had boys to men. I found I went to that station because I knew they played those songs. Although we've come to the end of the road. And I was crying. I was holding the radio. Oh, Lego. Oh. And I thought I'll never love again. I will, I will never date anybody again. If 
Fast forward to a couple of months later. You know, old things are passed away, you know. All things have become new. But there are many times we have made such declarations and seasons of our lives because we are so sure of the limited information that we have. And yet the one who stands outside of time, who has seen the beginning and the end of your time, that knows your very end from the beginning, the Alpha and Omega, and he's looking at you thinking, hey, yeah, this too will pass. You have no idea what I have in store for you in the future. Some people will make, try to make permanent decisions on temporary seasons of their lives. Temporary seasons. I know it feels like you are passing through the fire right now, and all hell is breaking on every side, but believe me, this too, shall pass there is a time and season for everything under heaven and sometimes we are fighting God and God is looking at saying hey yeah do you I, I wish I could show you what I have for you I wish I could show you how this is part of the plan to get you to your promised land I wish I could I wish I could but you see there's too much that I know that you cannot even begin to comprehend because my foolishness is higher than your highest level of wisdom the Bible says that he established the earth on the seas on the sea he, he founded it on liquid. Because understand that, remember, the first verse says the earth is the Lord. Everything in there belongs to him. Every creation has an ear for his creator. So you may not know what it can do, but the creator does. He founded it on the rivers, the Bible says. And then he goes the first, and he says he established it. Let me show you something. Let me look at scripture. I began to think about this. Look at Mark 6, 45. Mark 6, 45. This is liquid. So there must be a state that we do not know, the God state that God alters and does things in things that we cannot see or understand. Mark 6, 45. Jesus immediately insisted that all his disciples get in the boat and get ahead of him to the what? other side to Bethesda while he was dismissing the crowd. Continue on. Continue on. And after he said goodbye to them, he went to the mountain to pray. Continue. Now when evening had come, the boat was in the middle of the sea. Uh huh. And Jesus was alone on the land. Continue. Seeing the disciples straining at the oars because the winds was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, 3 to 6 a.m., he came to them Walking on the sea. <laughs> How many people have walked on sea before? If you have walked on sea, raise, raise your hand. Walking on liquid. That's that God state again. Because last I checked, you cannot walk on the sea. But I have a God who can do the impossible. We call it impossible because it is limited to our understanding. But the one who knows all sees the possibility in every impossible. Because with more information, you can do more. I heard somebody say, two people with information is more dangerous than a hundred people without. So the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If I have two people in a place that have certain information, and they move with what they know, and a hundred people are there and do not know. The two that know will cause havoc for the hundred. So we call it impossible because our understanding and our mindset cannot see beyond the boundaries of the limitation of our minds. So if the disciples knew that there was a state available or possible, they would not be worried about being in the storm. Are you with me? They were in the midst of this, and the Bible says Jesus came walking. He came walking. 
on the seas. It is the same water that we drink. <laughs> Where some of us will swim and drown, God will walk on top of it. Higher. It is this same water in Exodus when the children of Israel were going to cross. The Bible says they split, Moses split the sea and he stood as a wall. Water. Fluid. Stood as a wall. Somebody say the God state. Because of my time, I want to show you something. He established it on the, he found it on the rivers and established it on the seas. How did he do this? That's my mind. Let's go to Genesis 1, 6 to 8. Let me show you how he did this. How does God establish the earth on the rivers? Genesis 6, 1 to, Genesis 1, sorry, 6 to 8. Look at how God created the earth. And God said, let there be an expanse of the sky. In the midst of what? God looked at water and said, let there be an expanse of the sky in the midst of water and let it separate the waters below the expanse from the waters above the expanse. And God made the expanse of sky and separated the water which was under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse and it was just as he commanded. God called the expanse of sky heaven and there was the evening, the morning, the second day. Let's look at verse 9. Then God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place of standing, pulling together, and let the dry land appear. So God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the water he called seas. And God saw that this was good, pleasing, useful, and then he did what? After he affirmed it, what did he do? Hold on. He affirmed it. And he sustained it. So, so, so let's, let's paint a picture. God comes to water and says, huh, let me split the water. You see, God sees what we cannot see. How do you look at a body of water and say, you know what? I'm going to split the water. He says, I'm going to split the water. And there's going to be water. I want to take the water far above. And I want there to be a space that exists in between. Then the water underneath the space. Let's separate it. So I'm going to call this space sky. But it says that there's water above. Wait. Water is a hole. Like, can, can, can anybody see me? Imagine this whole body of water. God says, I'm going to split it. And let's separate the two. So this here... We'll put water above, then the one put it below. But what's in between, we'll call it sky. So, so, in other words, above us, there's water. We, you know, sometimes we just read things. We don't, let's break it down. Above us, there's water. And it's not small water. But wait, but wait. It rains, and then it stops. And it rains, and then it stops. But we have... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There is a body of water. Have you ever seen a body of water? Jump into the ocean. Tell the beach, tell the waves how to move. But there is someone that has suspended a body of water and decides how much should drop in such a way that it is good for us. That, <laughs> that is above us. Then he now says, the water below. He says, you know what, we'll call this one. He says, but seas, this one here is seas. So the one above, I don't know what the water above the heavens is called. But there's heaven, all we see is heaven. So when God said he seats, the earth is the Lord's. 
And that the earth is a stone, and and the heavens are his stone, and the earth is his footstool. His idea, his point of view of the earth. We can't even, we are looking, I, I, I can't even imagine what God sees. We have not drowned yet. That water has not come, if the water should come down, that is suspended above the earth. In between, he now says, the bottom is the seas. And he now says, you know what? These seas, but in the sea, so in the water, there's sky. In that same water, there's earth. How, sir, what are you looking at? He says, you know what? What is left of the seas? Move to one side. Expose the land that I know is already there. And this dry land, we will call it earth, land here. And you see this place, you will not go past this boundary. We will call it seas. How is it that you have water with crash? If you ever go to the beach and see the waves that crash, but somehow they get to a boundary and by themselves they recede. Who is pulling it back? The Bible says he not only affirmed it, but he sustained it. That means when he created it, he put certain things in place. He spoke, and how did he do this? He spoke words, let there be, let there be. So it is his word that sustains the boundaries, that keeps the water above the sky, that keeps the sea in the boundaries and allows the earth to grow. His word. He spoke it once. And from the moment he left his mouth, it has continued to sustain it. I'll prove it to you. Let me show you a scripture. 2 Peter 3 to 7. I have six minutes. 2 Peter 3 to 7. What does it say? 2 Peter 3 7. But by his what? But by his what? The present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly people. But by his word of the present heavens and earth are being reserved. But by his what? His word. So everything that we know as the earth, plus the heavens above, plus the earth below, plus the seas and the boundaries, plus the sun that rises every morning and sets at night, the two lights, everything is being preserved by his word. His word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was with Him in the beginning. (laughs) This Word became flesh and dwelt among us. (laughs) This Word that we have came as flesh and died and ascended but left His Spirit inside of you. The same word that spoke in the beginning, his spirit, his essence, his person, is now inside of you. He who spoke to waters and separated the heavens and drew drew boundaries for where the sky would stay and the earth would remain, now lives inside of you. Impossibility is nothing because the spirit that makes all impossible possible now dwells inside of you. If he can establish the earth on what they say cannot be built upon, anyone will tell you that the sea is not a foundation for any structure. If he can do that, there is nothing in your life that he cannot establish. No matter how fluid or unpredictable or or, 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 or tumultuous your life has been, 
God can look at it and say, yep, that's where I'm going to establish my kingdom. Are you listening to me? He looked at Peter and he says, Peter, on this rock. Peter, a fisherman, a hot-headed, you see, <laughs> when they came for Jesus, who pulled out a sword and cut off somebody's ear? Peter. He was that guy. The one who would betray Jesus. I told him, I love you, I love you, I'll never betray you. He says, Peter, calm down because I know you better than you know yourself. Jimmy, calm down. I know your weakness, but yet I still call you worthy. On this work, I will build my church. <laughs> because I can see beyond your limitations. I can see beyond your, in your idiosyncrasies. I can see beyond your weaknesses. I am the one that will sustain it. It's not you. Because if anyone should look at you based on your makeup and how you've been and the history of your past, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. He says, hold on, but it's not about you. I call the qualified. <laughs> I'm the one, when I call you, I make you qualified. I am the one that will build and establish. I am the one that will sustain by my word. He says, Peter, on this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. You have looked at your life through the lens of your limited understanding through the lens of your limited knowledge, through the lens of your history, of what you know. But I know someone who looks beyond what man sees, who looks beyond what man says is possible, who looks beyond your limited knowledge, who looks beyond your fault, who looks beyond your fears, who looks beyond your, 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 your discrepancies or your, your instability. He says, listen, I follow me and I will make you. I, I, he established, he founded the earth on the rivers, then established it. It is God that establishes. Man cannot establish. Man cannot establish. Wherever you may be, wherever you may be in any part of your life, God is still God. And he can take the foolish things of the world and confound the wisest of the wise. Because by his standard, their wisdom is foolish. That very thing that you are ashamed of, God says, that's what I'm going to use. <laughs> that right there, your shortcoming, that's perfect for me. What you don't want the world, that, you, yep. When he would bring salvation to Israel, lepers, lepers outside of a wall, that had been ostracized, lepers who could not walk, lepers who had been looked down on. He says, yep, those are the ones I'm going to use. He sees, he hears, he knows. And when you begin to trust him completely in areas of your lives that look like untroubled, that looks like troubled waters. Jesus walks on those too. In areas that look like will sink you, Jesus is in full control. There is nothing that he cannot do. There is no part of your life that is too big for him to control. He sustains the earth as we know it by his word. Why will his word not sustain you? 
The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If his word can sustain the earth, he can sustain every inhabitant in the earth. The word of God is living, is active, is energetic, and is full of power. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you specialize in the impossible. We thank you that you can see what we cannot see, that you know what we do not know, that you hear what we cannot hear. We thank you that nothing is too hard. You who knows the end for our beginning. You who can establish the foundations of the earth on rivers. Father, we trust you wholeheartedly today. What can you not do? Father, we put our lives in your hands. Whatever might feel like troubled waters in our lives, we are confident because we know that you are one who can build on water. <laughs> ah. Whatever might be tumultuous, we are confident because you walk on storms too. The Bible says, you said, peace, be still. And the disciple says, who is he that even the winds and the waves answer to him? Father, you own everything. So every part of us answers to you. So, Father, every word that you have spoken concerning us, not just now, but even in the future, we yield completely to you totally. If you can sustain the firmaments above and keep the seas in this place, you can sustain us too. We will trust you completely. Nothing will shake us because we know you are in control. We hold on to your word. We give you glory. And we thank you for the, the miracles we will begin to see in our lives. In places where we thought we were meant to sink, you shall establish us. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. Adoration and thanksgiving belongs to you. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. I looked at the time. It's 11.06 a.m. Five minutes, we are still close. Plus or minus. Amen. Really quickly. How many people are just thankful for Jesus? Don't limit God by what is possible, what he can do in your life. Everything he's ever done, one man, one person that was willing, yielded, open, and available. Those who know their God shall be strong and do what? Exploits. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Really quickly, um, birthdays before we close. If it was your birthday throughout the week or today, any birthdays in the house, please stand so we can appreciate you. Okay, we have birthdays. One, two. Don't stop. Play Please, please. If you were born in As we are celebrating God bless As we are celebrating God bless you If you were born in Stand up, stand up If you were born in February, stand up, stand up As we are celebrating God bless you As we are celebrating God bless you.
as we are celebrating. To all our celebrants, we want to say happy, 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 happy birthday. We want to pray that this is the least you'll ever be in the name of Jesus. You will never have a better yesterday in the name of Jesus. You will grow from glory to glory, grace to grace, and strength to strength. We pray that this marks the beginning of the best years of your lives in the name of Jesus. Many, many years the Lord will add on to you in the name of Jesus. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and you will always bring forth fruit in your season in the name of Jesus. We pray that the Lord will bless you, enlarge your territory and expand you on every side in the name of Jesus. Long life and prosperity will he satisfy you with in Jesus' name. One more time, appreciate all our celebrants. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If it, um, your wedding anniversary, wedding anniversary today or throughout the week, any wedding anniversaries, any wedding. Oh, we have one. We have two. We have three. We have four. We have five. It's like all the wedding I was going to say all the wedding anniversaries are on this side, but then we have one over here. Okay, so let, let, me, let, me, let me start here. Wait. Or maybe here. Yeah. Let's start here. Then we'll come here. Oh, no, you're already there. Okay, we'll start here. Sorry. Sorry. Sir, we're going to come to you really quick. How? Let's get the camera on him. How many years, sir? Fifteen, sir. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Too many more years in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. Let's go over. Let's go over there. Sir, we're coming to you. How many years, sir? He's going to give you the mic. He's got the... To the glory of God, 25 years. 25 years! Too many more years in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Ma, we're coming to you. How many years, ma'am? 15 years. 15 years! Too many more years in Jesus' name. God bless you, ma'am. Ma, we're coming to you. Ma, how many years? 26 years. 26 years! Too many more years in Jesus' name. God bless you, ma'am. Okay, we're coming over here. We're coming to the back. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Ma'am, we're coming to you. How many years, ma'am? 25 years. Come on! It's like 25 is the number this year. Too many more years in Jesus' name. Why, why, why are you showing me? Can we show the two? Uh -huh. Sorry, ma. Too many more years in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. God bless you, ma. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. We're coming. Where are we going? Over there? All right. Ma'am, we're coming to you. We're coming, we're coming. We're coming. All right, my way. We have the camera on you. Hold on. Who, who are you showing? Fantastic. Ma, how many years? 16 years. 16 years? Another Ori user. 16 years to many more years in Jesus' name. God bless you, Ma. God bless you. Any more, any more, any more, any more? Going once, going to. Are you, if you. I was going to say, check or if you're wedding anniversary, don't forget to be sure. God, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Okay, okay, all right. All hearts and minds clear. We ready to go home? No, it's like it's too early. Come, let's be going. Hand up. It's like, I'm not used to this, huh? What's going on? It's okay. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. 
and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you on Sunday. Amen. God bless you.